Okay, Sean. Okay. So here we are, Sean, again. Uh, last episode we did was episode 18 of the Read Method Insider podcast. And if you remember, we tried to do Facebook Live that day and didn't have much luck. No, it didn't work out too good for us, did it? No, it didn't. But uh, we've learned a lot since then and uh, a lot. we've become techies since then. Well, maybe you have. We've had to. I mean, if you want to do this on the Facebook world, man, and uh, and stream live, you better figure out a way, right? Absolutely. So here we are. But thankfully, I have somebody helping me, so I cheated a bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I've been really excited to talk to you again. Uh, last time we were on, we had a great audience who listened to the podcast and shared the podcast. Uh, and we discussed uh, quite a bit about the car business and uh success principles we we actually dove into seven principles of sales success uh part of it out of a chapter in my book i think chapter three where i where i dove into uh some of the principles required for ultimate sales success so i just wanted to welcome you to the show again i know you've been a busy man so thank you so much for joining me again oh it's my pleasure man uh i really like your show i like what you stand for i like what you do uh it's kind of cool that we can have two different countries I know. Here, right? representing tonight you know two different countries yeah so all my all the snowbirds from canada though, are down in your part of the neck of the woods now well, I, they they are they are yeah. they're, very, they're very white too i know literally half of my clients are down there now because they all leave <laughs> and you can always you can always tell them they're the people walking around with red skin from the sun <laughs> <laughs> they always get burnt <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> that's funny anyway so in this episode of the read method inside a podcast this is episode 25 and i'm very happy that sean is joining with me sean hayes you're a car guy from st augustine florida and i'm Everald reed uh, i work with lexus of oakville in ontario canada uh, i'm the author of the read method book and the host of this podcast the read method inside a podcast and on today's episode we want to discuss uh, personal brand and representation and how social media and community involvement drives business for sales and sales reps in their organizations, whether it's car sales or what you could be selling doors or whatever. Uh, the bottom line is personal branding is becoming uh, pretty necessary. And I think you, Sean, uh, and uh, Dave, and a lot of the guys in your group are pretty much the best at that right now. So you're the best person to have on to talk about that, how to get salespeople like myself and the auto business and other businesses to drive more business towards success using social media branding. Well, look, Everald, in today's market, okay, first traffic is dead. Okay, yeah. Can we all just come to the conclusion that people stumbled into your dealership going to multiple dealerships? It just doesn't happen the way it used to. Okay, the stories your grandpa told you and all that about how they could sit out there and wait for customers, that, that those days aren't coming. The average customer goes to 1.4 dealerships now. Okay, and if that's the case, you need to get your name out there and tell people what you do for a living. If not, you're going you're gonna to suffer. Your paycheck's going to suffer, uh, your business is going to suffer, and your employer is going to suffer. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's a couple of... Um points to this that I've noticed and I've studied in recent months. Uh, one is clients are shopping, obviously, for the salesperson. We know that. But in order for the salesperson to get ahead of the game, ahead of guys like yourself, Sean, who, you know, who's killing it in your marketplace, they need to create that identity for themselves. Because if, 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 if when they come into your showroom, they're really looking for that right person you could be already portraying who that right person is on the web ahead of their visit. And at my dealership, we're getting clients calling right now based on our Google reviews and asking for specific reps based on their Google, the amount of Google reviews we have and the amount of Google reviews that sales rep has. And that's who they want to deal with. So the other point is clients are not necessarily looking for the logo on the building anymore as much as they're looking for you and me, right? So you represent in Augustine uh, Hyundai very well. So really they're coming there a lot because of you. Well, that's, I, I really believe that that's 
I, I'm an independent contractor inside my dealership. And luckily, my owner looks at it that way as well. He gives me every tool I need. He gives me the computer. He gives me paper. He gives me staples. He gives me, you know, the phone. He, he advertises for me. So at the end of the day, my job is to fill in the gaps. Yeah. I have to look at this as an, I am an independent contractor within his organization. And so I need to do all the necessary things to get my name out there. Okay. It is important. Reviews are important. Uh, you need to, if, if one of their friends, okay, hears them say, I'm going to go buy a car, you want them to have thought of you, right? So the only way you can be the best sales. I think I sold this, told you this on your last show. I think you can be the best salesman in the world. But if nobody knows what you do, okay, you're not going to sell much. So yeah, yeah. I think especially in today's market where you have less foot traffic, it's very important to get your name out there and tell people what you do. So I see what you're doing on Sales Hustlers and where you've encouraged um, a lot of the followers to create a video or to create a little bit of a branding or you're going to be teaching them how to to create their own brand, to represent, you know, what special, um, you know, authentic uh, proposition or value they bring to the marketplace and for their clients. So uh, that's really, really good. So tell us why do you think so, uh, personal branding matters so much more today? Well, back in the day, people used to go to dealerships. They don't. So I need, I, I found out a long time ago that uh, I noticed it. I got into the business in 07 and I noticed the traffic every year going further and further down. Okay. And it's very, very important that you work on repeat business, customer referrals. And then if you do get people that want to buy a car, they got to know who you are. All right. So I said, uh, seven months ago, I said, I got to get my name out there. Okay, I have to make a splash because there's a lot of people that I knew were coming into the dealership that I happened to know that were buying cars from other people. Yeah. They didn't ask because they weren't asking for me because I didn't let them know what I did. All right. So I said, okay, there's going to be no more of that. All right. <laughs> there's going to be no more of that. Okay. I can't have another person, another neighbor, or somebody come into my dealership and buy a car from Bill. Okay. I'm not going to let that happen. So I'm going to basically uh, devour my marketplace. And that's what I decided to do. I wanted to blanket it. I wanted to take over, dominate. I read the book uh, 10X. Yes. And then that was it. That set me off. And Gary V. okay, those two people right there together, um, they really got me jump started. Okay. And, they, and I had to take what I did every day and take it full go, full throttle. Man, don't stop. Okay, so that's, and that's, Grant, that's, that's Grant Cardone and Gary Vee, right? Yeah, but that's the problem. A lot of us just sit back and we wait for things to happen. Yeah, you know. No but more. I have so much drive in me. I just needed that jump start. I needed somebody to say, "Look, you can be the greatest. You just have to have more activity." So, so here you go. Now, how? And and I'm glad to hear that your owner has adapted to it well and is willing to support you because a lot of uh, organizations still are skeptical and you know how dealerships already some don't like to spend very much in advertising or to be innovative and one of the things i know for a fact is that the answer to the future and for those people who want to be successful is innovation and marketing so your innovative approach um, your marketing concepts you're marketing yourself, you're a brand now, you know, I'm a brand now. Uh, and that's what people like. And people, you know, it's gratifying when people recognize me and say, oh, you know, you're the guy from the read method, or in your case, you're the, the car guy. Right. So that's what you want to be trusted. Um, I, I talk a lot about authenticity. And I talk a lot about a guy who offers solutions not just selling cars, because cars or computers or whatever you're selling is the, the byproduct, but is it an, a real solution for the client? And sometimes, you know, depending on what you're selling, what you're offering your, or your solution may not be the right one for the client. And it's worthwhile saying that sometimes to them, you know, what you're looking for is not exactly what I can offer you. Here's, here's somewhere else, or here's something else that works better for you. Because I find in my now 28 years, Sean, if you can believe this, 
this past August. 20 years in automotive, eight years in advertising and marketing. From 25 years ago, people still reach out to me today to ask my advice. And that's the type of thing I see, you know, loyalty and base that I see that you're building. Well, thank you. And that was the goal. Uh, obviously, in sales, you don't want to go out there. I mean, cold calling sucks. Can we just be honest? You know, Everald, I mean, who likes to sit on the phone all day, right? I mean, look, I'm just going to be honest with you. I know we sit here and tell people, like, pick up the phone, dial, dial, dial. And I know that. And, and look, I'm not saying that the phones don't work. But I'm saying, at the end of the day, can't we try to not have to just sit there and cold call all day? Can't we figure out how to generate business other ways? I think these other ways are more creative and interesting, okay? Look, somebody told me the other day, Everald, or it wasn't the other day, it was a couple months ago. They said the, the common, the word, okay, the, the speech or an email, okay? A video is worth 1.8 million of those words. Wow. Well, if one video is worth 1.8 million words, then why the heck do I want to put words down on paper or call people? I want to put videos out, right? <laughs> and I think that's what's got so much traction is like, look, not only is your content got to be good, but if you keep doing it all the time, you keep, you're, you're putting your face in people's phones and in their computers and in front of them. And at the end of the day, okay, that's what we have to do. We have to be seen. We have to be known. Okay. Um, and, and that's really my focus has been the last seven months to blanket my marketplace. Okay. Let everybody in my city know what I do. All right. And if I let everybody in my city know what I do, then when they think they're buying a car, they think of the car guy, man. And that was basically, that's why I wore sunglasses. People say, well, why are you wearing sunglasses? People need to see your eyes. I said, no, I need to have something specific that people remember, okay? And that's where the sunglasses came in. So I think they're going to buy for two reasons, Sean. They're going to buy because you wear the sunglasses. And they're going to buy because they'll remember the phrase, the car guy. The car guy. And that's Brandon. Yeah, they, they might not remember Sean, but they're going to remember the car guy, right? Yeah, they'll be on their porch having a drink and say, let's let's go see that car guy tomorrow. No, that's good. I I, I love it. So I, I watch you quite often uh, when I have the time. And uh, you and I are up at uh, some ungodly hour every morning working and getting the day ready. So, uh, <laughs> you know, as I say, early bird gets the worm. So I guess that's yeah. two of us here. But um, no, that, th those are some great points, Sean. Um, so how do you use this now to build your customer base because ultimately we're talking about building a customer base of loyal what i call raving fan clients okay well i did a little different than some guys out there okay and i did that on purpose okay a lot of guys go out there and they splash they splash with 199 come on down here check out this car right and they advertise the car they advertise the dealership but everybody does that ever and if everybody zigs i want to zap OK, because I'm not going to be unusual or interesting if I'm doing the exact same thing everybody else is doing. Right. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I want to take a different approach. I'm going to be the expert. OK, I'm going to show all my customers and all the city that I know a lot about car sales. So if you're going to buy a car, why do you want to go from anybody else but the guy that knows the most about car sales? Right. And so that's where the videos came in. The videos came in to be an expert in my field to show people out there, look, you don't have to buy from some chump, okay? You don't have to buy from some guy that you just, it happened to be his turn to go up next, all right? If I show you I'm an expert and every day I teach my fellow man, I give to them, I give my time, I give what I know, okay? I tell you how to buy a car, I show you that I'm, uh, 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 what am I trying to say, that I'm an honest guy, okay? Yeah. That I have ethics, okay? That I care about people, why wouldn't you want to buy a car for me, right? So and that's I what it really comes down to is that caring, right? Um, not just taking money and taking the quick sale, but actually showing uh, that you care and you offer different solutions and you do things a different way um, where people say, hmm, that other guy or the other salesperson didn't tell me about it, that. And because I remember those, uh, those folks that went to seven dealerships and still bought from you in, in that one video and they you know, they told you about that experience because the the six other places or seven other places they went to, 
I bet everybody was kind of doing the same thing, right? And you were different. Well, that's what you have to be. And that's, that's why I said you got to zig instead of zag. I mean, if everybody's doing one thing, but really the marketplace has already told you we don't like this one thing. Yeah. Then why the heck do I want to go down that same road and keep doing that one thing? Okay. Exactly. So what you're doing now is, is kind of my second point. We want to talk about creating uh, the great, a great purchase and service experience. So you're out there with your marketing and your innovation and you're bringing in a lot of these clients to the dealership, but you also want to keep them coming back. So, you know, you, you don't want to do all this work, all this groundwork and have them buy one car and not send their friends or, or neighbors or referrals. So what do you do to create the purchase experience that make them say, yeah, I didn't just buy from him because of his sunglasses or because he's the car guy, because he looked after me great once, but the next time I need a car, I'm going to go see that guy. Well, that, that, that comes down to the purchase experience, Everold, and how you have to make it special for them. you got to have empathy. They've got to understand that you, you're not just in this for a transaction. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I want them to understand. Now, look, you've got to be authentic. Okay? And you got to be real with people. Don't put on the cheesy thing that some people do. That doesn't work. Just be yourself. Be, be, be honest with them. Have empathy. Listen to them. Ask the right questions, but listen. Okay, and then while you're through the process, man, give them that million dollar walk around, you know, find that rapport that you can build on the test drive. Okay, and then when you're when you're presenting the numbers to them, okay, take the time, explain it to them. Here's the thing. I really believe in education selling. Okay, I really believe it. Some people, old school guys don't. They just want to cram people in cars. I think if I educate a buyer, okay and I treat them the right way, like I care, they're gonna be lifelong raving fans for me. And that's what I want. In today's market, you want raving fans, okay? You don't want customers, you want raving fans. I want you to leave my dealership and I just tagged you on your new car through Facebook, okay? And you run home, all your friends see your new car because I tagged you and then they're commenting and then I tag them Okay, and then we become all one big group and you follow me and watch my videos every day, right? I have my customer base watch my videos every day, Everold. I mean, That's how amazing. crazy is that? Would That's they ever crazy. buy another car from anyone Any, else? No. Yeah. You know, I had a guy the other day, I sold a car too. Now I sold him a Genesis probably uh, four months ago, okay? Now, he wasn't my customer at that time. He turned in that day to my customer. He is the vice president of sales for AT&T, okay? Wow. He literally, I told him what I'm doing. He was so interested. I tagged him. He watches every morning. Every morning, he watches my video. And he came in the other day and bought another car, but priced it out of three other dealerships. And he said, don't worry, Sean. I will never buy another car from anybody else. Just match the price. That's what, that was his exact words. In fact, he's probably watching it tonight. So oh, good. Well, hello. <laughs> yes, him. but that's yeah. the point. We have to. You have to win these people over, but not with a fakeness. It's an authentic side of you. Just show them that you care. You know what I mean? That's all they want. Yeah. So authentic solutions, creating that great purchase and service experience is what your your formula is basically. So here's the other. Um, point I wanted to touch on the third point of this uh, episode of the Read Method Insider podcast. This is episode 25, folks, and I have Sean Hayes with me live from Florida, St. Augustine, Florida, uh, home of the PGA. Um, I've actually been down there, Sean, working uh, in my advertising days, so I'm very familiar with St. Augustine. And um, I'd love to be there right about now because it's four degrees here. So, <laughs> um, But anyways, we want to touch on leasing. And leasing is actually my specialty at uh, Lexus of Oakville, where I hang my hat during the day. Um, it's a whole new thing uh, for me where I create multiple deals and most of my business through leasing because it's, it's different in Canada. I think the percentage, we, we do 70% leasing. What wow. sort of percentage do you, yeah, what sort of percentage do you guys do there? Uh, probably about 35%. Yeah. That's yeah, we do 70%. We do 70% and uh, 
When I started the process uh, after returning to the automotive industry uh, six years ago, um, we were at uh, we were much lower. Let's just say that we were a much lower uh, percentage. But it is the way. And I heard you talk about it. The reason I decided to bring it up in tonight's episode is that I heard you speaking about it once before uh, on one of your uh, episodes. And here are the way, folks, for all you guys who are bringing in your clients and working hard like Sean is to build this customer base. Now that you have this customer base, if you're not familiar with Leeson and know it inside and out, it's time you do. Because that's the next way that you can pretty much capture a huge customer base. Instead of having to sell a new customer every time, every four or five years or every three years, believe it or not, guys, I, I can tell you, I have a formula, I have a whole system where some of my clients I renew literally every year, some in eight months, some in 18 months, and these are clients that are in three, four, five-year leases. So there are ways to do it. Um, I, I do coaching on this and I'm, I, I participated, um, you know, I can speak to this with the knowledge because I've, I've participated with uh, Toyota and Lexus Canada uh, in focus groups in developing ways to increase lease renewal rates. So I just wanted you and I to have a little discussion about that to share with the audience and how now that they're bringing in business, you know, with social media branding and marketing and all the different ways that we're talking about, how to actually build their database faster and keep their database. Well, if the average person buys a car and finances it for 72 to 77 months, their, their trading cycle is gonna be four years, yeah. right? Probably, right? So if that's the case, you know, obviously leasing is going to keep them in your dealership more, okay? Everything's under warranty. A lot of the things are covered everybody's happy every two and a half years in your case a lot sooner but in my case every two and a half years they basically get a new car now a lot of people are scared of leasing or they don't understand it and that and that's it you're scared of it because you don't understand it that's it i i agree because if you were on if you understood it it's the better way to buy a car okay why do i want to buy a depreciating item that makes no sense, right? I know, I know I sell cars, so I shouldn't say that, but I believe I lease, I have three leases, okay? Me, my wife, and son. I don't buy cars. I will not buy a car. It makes no sense, okay? It depreciates. I'm going to lease them. I'm going to use what I use, okay? And then I'm going to get a new one because my wife, she wants a new car every two and a half years. So why the heck do I want to take a negative equity hit every two and a half years, right? Exactly. And- What's affecting this a lot more today is when you get fender benders or accidents and you've financed a car for five, six, seven years, and even if it's repaired, you're just dr stuck driving around a car that's worth way less because you bought it, you know, and you, inv you invested all this money and thinking, you know, I've done a good job. Absolutely. I mean, who would you rather take the depreciating hit? You or the manufacturer? Okay, and uh, in in the case where an accident happens, when you come to trade that car into me, I'm going to pull a car fax and see it has a car wreck on it, and I'm going to ask you about it, and of course you're going to forget about it because that's what everybody does. But then I'm going to ding you instead of dinging the manufacturer. And in a lease situation, it wouldn't be on you; it'd be on the manufacturer. You could wreck it four times; it doesn't matter. Hey, Sean. Yes. I need to take a break here. One second. Uh, there's a technical glitch here. Okay. I'll okay. All right. What's up, everybody? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. I am. I'm here. No problem.
Yes, I'm here. Yeah, no problem. Do you want to go back to Facebook Live? No, nah, don't worry about it. Let's just let's just rock this thing, man. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so we're good now. Okay, I'm back to the other phone. So I'm, yes, I am. Okay, cool. It, 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 it's, it's just like it froze up on you. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, here's the key. You have to mention this early. You got to mention it early on, okay? Because this can't be something that you mention at the end when they don't want to agree to your payment for a purchase, okay? And, yeah. you, and it looks like you just kind of threw a Hail Mary and said, oh, I got a great idea, you know what I mean? So this has to be something that like um, you sprinkle in at the beginning, okay? So before you even talk about pricing or anything like that, you know, do you guys drive a lot? You know, no, we don't drive a lot. Great, great. How often do you trade your cars in? These are two key questions you can ask to maybe formulate some information. And uh, if they're great prospects, which I think, by the way, everybody is a great prospect for a lease. But a lot of times uh, I just preface it by saying, you know, those are two important questions that people can be convinced easily to lease. Okay. Um, so if, if they don't drive much and they like to trade their cars in every three years, then what the heck are we purchasing a car for? Okay. They're not going to get the value out of that car. They're going to be negative equity. And if they, they're like, well, why pay cash anyways for my car? Well, then that's, that's silly too, because you just bought a depreciating item that's, you're not going to get your money out of. So I like to sprinkle in leasing early. And I just say, well, have you thought about leasing? And they say, they'll either say, no, no way. I'll never lease. Or Oh uh, yeah, or no, I don't really know much about it. Okay, good. So before I get pricing, I'm going to explain what leasing is, okay, and how it benefits them, and how so many more people in America are doing it nowadays because of the benefits of it, okay? And I tell them, look, when I'm back there getting pricing, it doesn't hurt me one bit to put this on, on the page too. So I'm going to have a total out the door uh, cash price. I'm going to have a finance option. Uh, with 16 different ways to buy it. And I'm also going to put a lease option on there for you also. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's amazing. So is your, is the business within your dealership and across the United States? Because like I said, it's a little different here in Canada where leasing is right up front as an option. Uh, it's pretty much leasing first, financing, and then cash. We try to discourage um, a lot of our clients from purchasing cash. Um, in my um, demographic, in, in where I live, Oakville, Ontario, for example, uh, where our dealership is rather, the, the per capita income there, the net worth there is in the millions of dollars. So people have money to spend and buy cars cash all they want. But even them will not do it once we educate them. Because number one, if there's an accident with that vehicle and it's written off, for example, Yes, you're going to fight with your insurance company to get a payout for a car that you dropped, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on versus having that discussion left between the leasing company and your insurance company and you had not put a huge down payment down or you're not, you know, expense or roll the check for $40,000 or $50,000. So it's 
a much more secure way of investing your money elsewhere. And especially with the low interest rates available today with auto sales, like why would anybody even take cash in the first place? It is beyond me. So I always wanted to go, the salespeople that actually run away from me, dealership, do you find that a lot of them you know, stay away from it or are they, are they even up to speed on the full benefits? Well, no, absolutely not, Everald. And, you know, if they were, we'd probably have higher lease penetration. But, I, you know, I a lot of that comes from they're not trained properly on it. OK, and yeah. if they were trained properly on it, I think they would understand it and then be able to convey it to a customer. See, we don't want them to out there bumbling and stumbling and telling customers about it if they don't feel like they're comfortable with it. That's something that you have to. It's not selling it, but you have to be confident in it. You know, and if you're not confident in it, how are you going to express it with confidence to the customer? You're not. So you're going to bumble and stumble. Okay. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we need to train people better on it. Um, and they have to be educated because customers, I believe, once they see it in black and white, okay, in front of their eyes, broken down with from an educated salesman who knows how to convey it, they're going to, not all the time, you're still going to get your stubborn people, okay? But, but more, than, more than often, I can convert somebody to a lease. You're absolutely right. So what salespeople need to understand is how does it benefit a client? That's the first thing, and that's what they have to be able to explain. Not how it benefits them, right? you know, because it does, and I'll get into that, but how does it benefit the client? The what? flexibility of upgrading frequently, for example, less maintenance costs because you're driving a newer vehicle all the time. Uh, thirdly, the convenience of not having to take major depreciation if the car has been in, in an accident repair or written off. Mm -hmm. And the vehicle can be returned um, at or close to the lease end anyway. So from a dealer's perspective now, the benefits are you get your best trade-ins because the best trade-ins are the ones that your own clients drive and you you service all the time. So those vehicles are coming back, going on your used car lot, you know, reconditioned, of course, for you to sell. And you can say, yeah, I know this car. I sold this car when it was new. That's more credibility. You can tell the history about the vehicle, and that is huge to clients because that's confidence. Because people buying used cars, you know, they're always wondering where the car came from, how many owners, who drove it, was it in an accident, was it serviced, all that stuff. You can tell that whole story if you lease more vehicles and build a base of constant uh, repeat business. Well, Everald, a lot of times the, the salesman, he's just selling the payment. You know, he's not selling why it's better for the customer. Unfortunately, he's selling, well, you pay less money. Come on, man. That's not a, that's not a, that's not, you know, a benefit. I mean, that is, but that's not it. You didn't really go into why. I mean, a lot of customer or a lot of customers think, well, I don't own anything. You know, I don't own anything. Well, if you can break that down to him and explain to him when you finance with the bank for 77 months, you don't own anything either. Okay. Anyway. And, you know, and. In fact, it's worse for you because now in three years, you can't even trade out of that thing. You owe more than what it's worth and you're responsible for it. So um, I just love leasing. I think leasing is a smart way to buy it. Um, and believe me, another thing is I lease three vehicles myself. So I tell my customers, look, I wouldn't do anything that wasn't smart for me. Right. Why the heck would I lease a vehicle? Yeah. I'm like, look, I, I can show you right here in the computer. I lease three of them. Do you think, you think I've been in the business this long? You think I'm stupid? No, I'm not. So I'm only going to do what's best for me and my family, right? So that's why I'm so passionate about it. And I think if salesmen understood it, okay, they could explain it better and have passion behind it. And passion sells, Evel. You know that. If, if you yeah, feel, that's so different, Sean, that, you know, sometimes the clients ask you, so what do you really drive? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you point out and you say, uh, I, I don't drive a Lexus or you don't drive a Hyundai something. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so, you know, you, you pretty much can lose credibility right there because you're, you're, you know, speaking about selling the product or presenting something that you don't even own or you won't even buy yourself. No different than the leases here. You've leased the vehicle so you can attest to why. And 
people, you will draw instant credibility on because if your whole family, you know, is releasing vehicles, that says a lot right there. Right. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't purchased a car, literal, a literal purchase in, you know, 10 years. Okay. Once I found out, I'm, I had to get in the car business first to understand what leasing was and why it was better for me. I never understood it. You know, I just thought it was like renting a car, but it's really not. I mean, you know, but that's the way some people think about it. And you know what? The eighties were terrible for us with leasing, Errol. Yeah. You know, I mean, there must've been some bad manufacturers doing some bad things because it, it put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. And, you know, it's different nowadays, but it's hard to convince people um, right off the bat, man, you have to you have to know what you're talking about. And it was different. It was also a bad time in the in the late nineties and even the early two thousands when you know the big three were doing two year leases, and that's one of the things that almost sunk them. Um, you know those companies because they were getting all these cars back after two years and had depreciated like a rock. Yeah. And yeah, so it it, it didn't help. Uh, in the 80s, and it didn't help, you know, before the auto, auto bailout as well. So uh, it's important to what you're thinking of purchasing. Or purchasing. Um, you know, you don't. But but I guess from the client's perspective, if you can return the car for two years, you're out of it. It's right up to the manufacturer. Absolutely. You know, you know, ever what you were saying there? Yeah, um, that's bad for the manufacturer, but that's not bad for the client. The client. The client had a two-year commitment to something, you know, and they, they don't care what it's worth. In fact, you can even say it to this, what do you care for what it's worth? If you own this thing in two years, you own that depreciation, okay? Yeah. Now the yeah. manufacturer does. You give the darn thing back. If you wrecked it four times, it doesn't matter, okay? You 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 just go pick you out a new one, you know? Yeah, and you still have your check, you know, the tens of thousands that you're going to write a check for, you still have it, so... Um, Here's uh, the last thing, uh, one of the last things I want to touch on leasing is most of the vehicles that I lease, I initiate the conversation. Mm -hmm. Our clients, and this is something that I that I teach a lot, and uh, you know I coach a lot of and mentor a lot of guys on, is we don't wait, and I don't wait for. You know, someone to be a year away from their lease end or six months away from their lease expiry. If they're in a four year contract or a three or a five year contract, whatever term they're in, I'm looking for opportunities whenever there are great incentives. And that's every year, like every fall, you know, every spring and fall, there are always great incentives. For us, it's sometimes even in the winter because things are slower. So there's always an opportunity. Once you have a lease portfolio, literally go up and down that list from month to month, update the list every month, see what the client's bio is updated to, and see if there's an opportunity based on incentives, interest rates, loyalty incentives, trade values. You know, you're looking for a particular car that they may be driving that you could sell as a used car to somebody else. So all these opportunities are on the table and on how many clients I will literally call, and this is literally what I do. There's the spreadsheets on my computer every day, and I'll go up and down and I'll, and I'll see a particular payment. And of course, I know who the client is because I sold them initially, and I'll call them and they'll be in the car and I'll say, "How many kilometers are in your car?" You know, as they're driving, you know, and they'll tell me, and I'll say, "Well, it's time to get a new car." And <laughs> you know, some of them, you know, crack up because. Our clients are literally now trained and know what to expect when they call them. And the funny thing is, and it's a good thing, is that they actually like it. They actually like the idea now of upgrading and getting new cars often. Well, I would have to say that that's going to be determined from manufacturer to manufacturer. I'm, I'm sure Lexus has a higher residual and a better money factor than some of them out there. So... Um, like some brands, you're not going to be able to do that. Okay. No. Well, uh, you know, we're not, I'll, I'll be honest in the Hyundai product. I'm not calling you in six months saying it's time to trade. I'm just not going to be able to do it. Okay. They have adjusted our residuals to, to resemble more of what they're supposed to be, you know? And, uh, I'd say about five years ago, I could do that. I think I was trading people out every year, but they had, 
their, their residuals were much higher. They were like 62%. And their true residual when those cars came back was closer to 52 Okay, so they took a bath on that, I think, Everald. So they've adjusted that, at least with our manufacturer. And uh, we're not trading people out as fast as that. I'd say about two and a half years is about my uh, my turning point right there. Whatever it is, I mean, and, and I'm just saying, you know, some cases like that, but whatever it is, it's still two and a half years. Correct. Is way sooner than four or five or six. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So, It's key. And it's only going to get more and more important, Everell, with the features that are coming on these cars and the often changing features. OK, you know, I mean, if, if you can get customers out of cars quickly with the advancement in some of this technology, who wants to be in a car loan for 77 to 84 months when these cars will be flying pretty soon? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, we're doing a tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, well, it's it's t we have the live event on Sunday. It's just a workshop. We got fifteen guys showing up. We're just going to help them brand themselves, uh, learn how to use social media, do more videos, stuff like that. We're gonna, we're just trying to teach them. Um, but tomorrow we're doing the same exact workshop, um, but not it's not in person. We're doing that in a webinar form. We're doing one for all the our, all all of our Australian uh, peep followers. It's, listen to this. I got to do this at four o'clock in the morning. Okay. So they can see it at a normal time over there. And then I got to work. I know, but I got to get up at like two thirty, three o'clock. 
And then I got to work all day. And then I have that same webinar that we did in the morning. I got to do now for the American people at seven at night. Okay, well, you wanted to be an international, you know, tech savvy, innovative marketing guy. Right. So there you go. There you go, right? <laughs> Take the good with the bad, right? Absolutely. I just want to, you know, thank you for having me on. And, and basically every day, I just want salesmen to just strive to be great. You know, every day, just try to get a little better. Don't be satisfied with the average or where you're at right now. If you're average, get better. If you're good, get better. If you're great, be excellent. Okay. Every day. You know what I mean? That's what you do. That's why you do all this extra work. You go to work all day. You work your butt off. Then you drive over to your studio. You put this on. I mean, that's hard work. That, that requires, you know, a lot of dedication and that kind of stuff doesn't go unnoticed, you know? Well, uh, you, you're absolutely right. And then tomorrow morning again, uh, in the studio doing uh, filming sports tomorrow. Uh, that's another first for me, but uh, it's all part of the journey and uh, it's all part of learning and part of uh, working at your craft and getting better and, and starting. And I encourage all the listeners out there who are seeking to be better, uh, to seek out guys and seek out coaching and seek out help is it, it's there and it's available pretty much for free. Um, you don't have to go this alone at all. And uh, I want to thank uh, Sean. I want to share uh, with the audience just before we go um, uh, questions, feedback, access to the Read Method Insider podcast, the dedicated email address, which is insider at the readmethod.com, insider at the readmethod.com, where you can uh, send your feedback. And you can download or listen to the episodes on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and that's uh, the Read Method podcast. You can also check out Sean's previous episode. He was on episode 18. And you can stay tuned for this one, episode 25, coming up. Uh, and also, of note, episode 21 and 23 was with Tom Hopkins, the great sales trainer, author of 18 books. And has trained over five million people, Sean. Like basically in it's crazy. Web seminars. It's insane. I know. So very fortunate to be in his company and yours. So I want to thank you again for joining me and spending the time with tonight mm-hmm. as we try to contribute. It was my pleasure. It really was. It was my pleasure. Always, always support the fellow man. Yes, exactly. So thank you so much. Keep up the good work and. Uh, uh, one day, you know, we should get together one day and uh, make an event out of it. Absolutely, man. I'll talk to you later. Thank you again. Okay. Take care.